All right, guys, this will be the uh, second lesson of our new unit here, the reciprocal fa uh, function family here, all right? So this will be continuing off of what we learned yesterday, which was our inverse variation here. So let's go ahead and jump into it and get a little bit of essential understanding. So uh, functions that model inverse variation have the form of f of x equals a over x, where x cannot equal zero. They belong to a family whose parent is the reciprocal function, which is going to be f of x equals 1 over x, where x cannot equal zero. Okay, So uh, the general form of a member of the reciprocal function family is y equals a over x minus h plus k. Again, h cannot equal zero. The inverse variation functions uh, equal uh, is y equals a over uh, x. And again, that's going to work. Stretches, shrinks, and reflections of that function are going to happen depending on the value of a. The graph of the parent reciprocal function is just going to be 1 over x, which is shown to the right. So again, this is going to be the general function that we see here, that 1 over x. So again, get very used to this graph here because uh, before we move any kind of translations here, moving up, down, left, right, or stretching or shrinking, however it may be, this is the basis of how we're going to see. So make sure you understand what this graph looks like and you know how to graph it in your calculator. Again, you just go to your calculator, go to graph, go y over x, or y equals 1 over x, and then I should show you what that graph looks like. But this is the basis for what our graphs should be looking like okay so example one graphing an inverse variation function here so there are going to be three steps here so i want to go through these three steps with you so what is the graph of eight equal uh, eight over x which again x cannot equal zero uh, identify the x intercepts and the y intercepts and the asymptotes of the graph also state the domain and range of the function so your first step that you should do is make a table of values that includes positives and negative values of x. So again, from here, what you would do is you would make tables. So again, you could type that into your calculator. So again, if you just typed in the equation of 8 over x, you would make a table where all your x's were negative and then where x's were positive. Okay, that's all that is. They just got these points here from their table. So again, if you were to go to your calculator and type it in, you go to your graph and then go to your table, right? Those are the points that would pop up. That's all it is. So that's your first step. Make a table of values and include positives and negative values of x. That's all it is, okay? So this is the second step. This is the same problem, but this is the second step. I told you there were three. Second step, now you're going to graph the points. So again, all they did from here was they graphed the points that they did on that table. So again, here were our points that we just looked at earlier, right? And now we're looking at the graph. So again, notice how the y values get closer to zero as the absolute values of x get larger. The absolute values of y get very large as our x approaches zero here. So all we're seeing here is that with that 8 on top, it is stretching it, right? So it's getting closer and closer. See, so the more you stretch it, the more it's going to get closer to zero. Okay, so that's all that's working there, right? And then our third step here is to connect the points with a smooth curve. X cannot be zero, so there is no Y intercept, right? Again, it doesn't cross the Z, it doesn't cross there. It gets really, really close to it, but it never actually touches it. Okay, uh, the numerator is never zero, so Y is never zero, and there is no X intercept. Therefore, we're going to have our X axis would be our horizontal asymptote. Remember, that's that line that goes left and right. That means there is a horizontal asymptote. That means our lines will get really, really close to that uh, that uh, uh, axis there but it will not touch. Same thing with our y-axis right there. That's going to be our vertical asymptote, the one that goes up and down. Again, our graph will get really, really close to the asymptote, but it will never actually touch or cross the asymptote. So knowing the asymptotes provide you with the basic shape of the graph. The domain is set is the set of all real numbers where x, cannot, uh, where, uh, x will not equal zero, and the range is the set of all real numbers except y will not equal zero. Very simple. That's that's our that's our domain and our range there. It'll be every number except x equals zero and y equals zero. That's our domain and our range. Okay. Example two: identifying reciprocal function transformations here. So our question states: for each given value of a, how do the graphs of y equals one over x and y equals a over x compare? What is the effect on the graph? So again, if we had different a's so far, we have a equals 6, a equals 0 0.25, and a equals negative 6. So before they even included that negative 6, they graphed all three of those right there where a equals uh, 6, 
a equals 0 0.25, and then a equals negative 6. So whenever they graphed all those, right, as we can tell there, um, as, as my a got bigger, right, uh, you see it stretching more. And it's getting it's getting a little bit more. So as we shrink, and as we see that zero point two five there, the the more we shrink, the closer we're gonna get to zero. Okay. So the graph in our blue is is shrinking, and then the graph in our six. So again, the way we stretch and we shrink, uh, shrink, is that if it is bigger than one, it's gonna consider to be a stretch, and if it's smaller than one, it's considered a shrink. Now understand what happens with the negative here. All that happens with the negative is it flips. So as you can kind of tell here in this bottom graph here, it's the same look of that uh, six over X, except now it's just flipped. So if I ever have a negative, it's always gonna flip into the other two uh, regions there. So it'll always be in the top right and the bottom left, unless it has a negative in front of it. That's when it will switch. Okay, so just understand what happens when a negative gets in there. That's all we're really kind of focusing on there. So this is the big thing that we need to focus on here for today is our key concept. So here's everything that we've kind of talked about. So again, if we stretch and our A is greater than one, then that means we're going to stretch. If, our, if we shrink, and again, if we're between zero and one, that means if we're smaller than one, we're going to shrink. But we will reflect if it is less than zero. That means if it's a negative number, it's gonna be a reflection, okay? Translation, so again, these are how we move vertically or horizontally. So up and down, left or right, right? So the way we determine that, we determine it vertically, which is up and down, by the H. So again, the H, uh, or sorry, the K is our on the outside there. That's how we move up and down, right there. And the H, as we see there, is our horizontal. So again, the in, the bottom number right there, that H, is how we move left and right. The outside, that plus K right there, is how we move up and down. Okay, so again, just make sure we keep that in mind. And again, it can be combined, so just understand that you you could be uh, moving left or right and up and down at the same time. So just just keep that in mind, or you could be stretching and shrinking as well. So it, it could be all of it. Just keep that in mind. Graphing a translation here. Oops. Shrink that. All right. So graphing a translation here. What's the graph of 1 over x plus 1 minus 2? So your first step is to start with your asymptotes, all right? So as we can tell here, uh, the H right there is a minus one and the K is a minus two. So again, this is the first thing you have to check for here. To get your H, you have to set the bottom part equal to zero and solve for it. That's why it's not plus one, it's minus one. So again, when I solve for that X right there, X cannot be negative one because we don't want a zero on the bottom part of that fraction. That's all that is. And then your K right there is what determines uh, how we're going to find, you know, whatever that K. So whatever that number is, that's going to be our K always. Okay. So then the vertical asymptote is going to be negative one. The horizontal, the left and right, is going to be negative two. So again, as we see here, the, the horizontal one, which is our left and right there, we moved down two and to the left one. So again, that's how we label where our asymptote is going to be at. So again, the horizontal asymptote moved down. Again, it's kind of hard to tell, but this line is moving here by twos. That's why we see negative four and the negative eight. So the, those missing points are negative two and negative six. So don't get confused by that. It's a little bit tricky there. But again, we move down two and then to the left one. So again, remember, the outside number moves up and down. The inside moves left and right. So this is the tricky one here because it's going to trick you into thinking that you move the same direction. You have to set that bottom part equal to zero and then solve for it. So that's always going to be the opposite of what that number is. Okay. So since we're, our point here is that negative one, negative two, that's where we're going to put our asymptotes. And then again, we're just looking for the general shape of where that uh, our graph is going to end up going there. Since there's no stretching or shrinking there with a one on top, Again, all we're looking for is to place the vertical asymptotes, and then we're going to uh, plot the points that you really want to, but really we're just looking for the general graph, okay? Again, you can always get those points that you can from your calculator. Again, you go to your graph, you go to your y equals, you plug it in, and that should give you the points, okay? Oh, and if it asks for domain and range, remember, that's our asymptotes. So again... For our X, remember our X right there was negative one and the Y was negative two. So those are the two points that it can't be. So it's the set of all real numbers. For a domain, it's gonna be X cannot be negative one. For Y, it's gonna be Y cannot be negative two. That's where they cross on those axes, okay? All right.
Example four, write in the equation of a transformation here. So again, your first step is to start with the middle part there. So we know it always starts at zero. So what we're trying to do is find out how much we go uh, up or down on the Y, how much we go over on the X. All right. So we're trying to find where that. So we have to be careful here and understand these are still going by twos. Again, four, eight. So that means those are two, four, six, eight. We're going by twos here. Okay, so we're going to say that there is a y asymptote. We have a y asymptote at 2, 4, at 4. And then our x right here is going to be, looks like it's in between 2 and 4 right there, which means x is going to be at negative 3. Negative 3. So whenever we have that, that point right there at negative 3, 4, right, understand that when, uh, once we get from here, then we should be able to, hold on one second. Then we should be able to substitute what we uh, solve for here. Remember, the X right here is gonna represent our H and the Y is gonna represent our K. So again, all we're doing here, guys, is just plugging it into our general formula. So again, X will always go for H, Y will always go for K, if that's the case. We have to be careful because remember, the H part is going on the bottom there. So if it's going to be on the bottom, I have to look for a part that where it's going to be a uh, part of it. So I have to move this negative 3 over to the X. So it's going to look for X plus 3. And again, that 2 doesn't change. And then since that's a positive 4, K always stays the same. So it's going to be plus 4. So we're, we already know immediately we're going to cross out B and D because those are minus 4. And again, we're looking for X plus three, which is our letter A. All right. So uh, that's going to be the end of today's lessons, guys. Uh, so we do have homework over this. It's already posted up on Math Excel for school. Again, you're going to have homework, and that's going to be due by Thursday at 11.59 p.m. Virtual office hours will be from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. as always. And then if you have questions, you know, feel free to contact me or email me, and then uh, I can help you the best way that I can. Otherwise, guys, uh, just make sure you're staying up with your work. And again, please come to virtual office hours if you do have a question. Other than that, guys, stay safe and just know that I'm continuing to be here for you. All right, guys, see you later.